Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega. I'm here with my special guest, Anel. Anel, glad to have you back. My pleasure. All right. Today, we're going to like talk about the, this is episode 155, and you know, our last episode was our last episode for a while, so apparently the universe wants us to create more episodes, you know, so that's why we're back. Um, all right, so this is episode 155, we're taping it on eight, oh, should we say when we're taping it, or maybe not, whatever, all right. 2014, <laughs> just a year. All right, um, the title is Free Will, Causality, and Human Beings, and the, the purpose of this is like some people say, well, yeah, they believe, they understand that everything has a cause, that causality rules the universe, but then they say, this causality doesn't apply to human beings. That somehow we, we can transcend this basic fundamental law of nature. So like that's, our show is going to be about like how explaining how, no, we can't. You know, it's like we are all like basically doing the will of the universe. All right, so before we get into this, let's, um, let's first define what people mean, what we mean by the term free will, and then why the show is like, immensely, monumentally, historically important. And now, why don't you start us off? I'm going to go with the simple definition today, that if you have free will, that means you could have done otherwise. Okay, yes, so let, let's go with that. Let's explain that a bit further. Some people say this, of course I have free will. I, you know, chose, like, to have, um, you know, cornflakes for breakfast today. I could have chosen Rice Krispies, right? They'll say that. You know, because I could have chosen otherwise, that means I have free will. All right, and now explain. Well, if I were to prove this theory, we would need a time machine, go back in time to everything, the exact, re rewind the universe to that exact moment, and say you have choice A, B, C, D, E, F, and you chose A, people who believe in free will have the onus to re rewind the universe and prove that they could have done otherwise All right, forget with about the knowledge they had at the time. Yes, forget about proof. Explain to, to people you know, so they can understand how they could not have done otherwise. You know, why it's, it's like an illusion. You couldn't have done otherwise because the entire state of the universe was a certain way at that moment in time. Your brain state was a certain way at that moment in time. With the knowledge that you had at that moment in time, you had no choice but to make the decision that you made. If you could have done otherwise, you would have. Okay. It's in other words, like, you know, the universe evolves moment by moment, state by state, and we are part of the universe. We're not, like, outside of it. So, like, it has mm -hmm. one causal history, you know, one chain of cause and effect. Now, if we would have chosen otherwise, what would that have meant? That we were different people, or the entire state of the universe were different. Exactly. Or we had different knowledge. We were different, a different person at that moment in time. Right. In other words, if the universe had evolved differently, that's the only way we could have chosen otherwise. Since the universe obviously didn't evolve otherwise. Right. It's impossible we could have chosen otherwise. So your theory is if we rewound the universe to back in time, everything would have happened exactly the way it did. Obviously, yeah. Right. Okay, another way, like, the people define free will is that, like, what they decide, whether it's Rice Krispies or Corn Flakes or whatever, is up to them, and nothing that's not in their control is either taking part in the decision or making the decision for them. So how do we refute that one? Say that one more time. <laughs> that people say that like of course I have a free will oh, okay. I can choose Rice Krispies or Corn Flakes without anything that's not in my control right. making, me, making that choice for me or contributing well, you to have the to choice say we don't have free will we have internally caused personal history wills so if you rewound the moment to that moment between what did you say Rice Krispies and Corn Flakes right. there's a reason why you picked which one did you pick in that scenario I heard, I heard. Uh, uh, Corn Flakes okay, there's a reason why you picked Corn Flakes now you may not know the reason but there's still a reason or a cause All right, in other words what he's saying is like this process of causality of cause and effect this reason is beyond our control we can't control the, the causal evolution of the universe another reason another thing that we can't control is our unconscious you know the decision as to whether we want to cornflakes and we're not going to get into this it's very complicated but basically we have to access information in our unconscious to make that decision and obviously if that that information and the principles by which we des decide is in a part of our mind that we're actually not even aware of that's why we call it unconscious we obviously you know don't have control over it going back to causality with an article i read a couple of weeks ago when i told you the author said he knows that everything's caused but it matters how it's caused we're both saying it doesn't matter how it's caused, physical or immaterial or spirits or ghosts. 
if you don't have conscious control over it, then you don't have free will. So all these people that say it matters how it's caused, it does not matter how it's caused as long as it's caused. Right, and again, why does it not matter how it's caused? Because, like, there is only one type of fundamental causality, which is the state of the universe evolving moment by moment causally. You know, anything that's happening within that state of the universe is subject to that evolution. So, so material or immaterial cause doesn't matter. If your will is caused, which it is, let's not get into an argument about, oh, that wasn't a physical cause. Okay. And anyway, like you said, everything happens in a moment in time. Would you explain that one more time? For, so say it's an immaterial cause, All right. yeah. uh, a, a soul. Some people say, Spirit. well, you know, like our decisions, our choices aren't physical. You know, right, they're, they're thoughts, you know, they're, they're just, you know, we can't like detect them. They're not physical. So like, so that they say, you know, gives them a, a defense for free will. It, it's, it's understand, it's not easy to understand how that would give them a defense for free will, but they say that nonetheless. All right. So now with that, you got to understand that like, let's say you define a decision as spiritual, yes. non-material, non-physical. Again, like like my co-host, what what's your what's your name today? Nick. All right, cool. All First right. time. Yeah, all right. Could like you know he's been going by the pseudonym Anel. He's coming in out, out into public with his real name Nick, and like pretty soon he's gonna give you his his last name Never. too. Well, maybe not. All <laughs> right. We're not on cable Whatever. access, right, but so I'm Nick, actually getting somewhere with this. All right. So so all right. Um, so all right. Where so okay, were we? uh, the non-physical cause argument. All right. So like so um. Basically, so Nick was referring to this thing of time. So if you define a decision, a choice, as being non-physical, it still takes place. You're still making that decision at a precise, specific moment in time. You could be making it at like at 3.15, at, at 9.26, whatever, you know, in 39 seconds. It, it occupies a precise moment within the timeline of the universe because, the, the, again, the universe evolves causally from the Big Bang, which is point zero, to, you know, um, 2014, however many hours or days or whatever, however you want to count it. So, like, as long as the decision, you know, occupies a space within that timeline, it is, it is physical, you know, because the universe is physical. Yeah, I like to say that time is linear. So it happens moment to moment to mo moment, like dominoes falling. So a non-physical entity like a spirit or a soul, you make the decision. It's, it's how your personal feelings feel about it in one moment of time. So it's a personally, it's a personal history internally caused physical thing. How you f the the, the non-physical comes into a moment in time, and how you feel about that causes your decision. Okay. So it's linear. All right, absolutely. Because I, I get confused when you say time is physical, but I like to look at dominoes falling, and each moment in time is a domino hitting the next right. one. Like, so oh, one moment in time causes it. So when you say time is physical, that's how I would I would like to use the word time is linear. All right, I'm not, I'm not saying time, I was is, like, time only goes in one direction. I'm not saying time is physical, quote unquote. I'm saying like time measures the rate of motion of physical objects. In other words, like our, our clocks are, you know, according to like solar time. You know, right. or sometimes there are quartz, um, you know, time measured and all. But it's, it's always time requires physicality, in other words. You know, it's not that it's physical itself. I'm just saying time and, is linear. And it One moment on, yeah. Also, you know, like Einstein referred to as space-time. So you can, yeah. like, have a certain kind of, like, a um, conception of time as, like, in other words, if you don't have time, you don't have space. If you don't have space, you don't have time. So, all right, let's get to the, um, the last part of this before we get to our main theme. Um, why is this? Wait, do you want to just touch on the self-cause thing or the first cause, human uh, beings? No, we, that's, we're going to do that a lot oh, in the okay. show. All right. But Good. before we do that, we're going to just explain to our audiences worldwide because this, this show goes all out, you know, everywhere. We hope Janice is watching. Um, yes, hello, Janice. All right. Um, why is this program, this series, oh, okay. this revolutionary series, you know, monumentally important to, to the faith? I want of you to humanity? quote the John Searle now. Right. That's why, because okay. now we're getting to love it. Don't take my word for it. Don't take Nick's word for it. You know, this guy, John Searle, who happens to be like the 13th or 14th most cited post-1900 philosopher in the entire world. He's not just like any philosopher. He was asked by like uh, psychologist Susan Blackmore for a book that they published in 2005, Conversations on Consciousness. You know, Blackmore asked Searle, you know, what would it mean if the, if the scientific un community, if the universe came to understand, acknowledge, and accept that free will is an illusion? He, would, he said, I quote, and I'm going to try to quote it directly. I don't have it right here. 
that would be a bigger revolution in our thinking than Einstein or Copernicus or Galileo or Newton or Darwin. It would alter our whole conception of our relation to the universe. Again, these are not my words. These are Searle's words. Searle's words. That is how big this is. This is about creating an entirely new human consciousness. Right. Why is it important? Well, we, I believe about 80% of our country is Christian, so that means I would assume if you know they believe in Jesus that that's a free will doctrine. So 80% of the country believes in free will. Why it's important is you can't have 80% of the population walking around with the wrong premise or belief system about how actual the true nature of reality is. It's just, I mean, you can argue what's better or worse for mankind, like, you know, are people going to do whatever. The point is, I don't care about that. The point is, it's the truth. And so to have people that. walking around with the wrong consciousness or the wrong mindset thinking things that they've done wrong or that they failed at are their fault, causing maybe self-hate and other hate, causing homicide and suicide and all kinds of malicious intent uh, implications. You know, this no free will versus free will debate has got to get out there to get the ball rolling on what is correct because one of us is correct. You can't, you know, you either have free will or you don't, and we firmly believe – that you don't, we need the truth out there. Yeah. But I, besides it being the truth, I think it's actually better for humanity as well. But we can talk about that. Which is what I'm just going to briefly. But even go if into it were that. worse, it's the truth. Yeah, but but no, no, it's, I, it is it is like you know exceedingly better for humanity. In other words, right now somebody does something wrong, we condemn them, we blame them, we indict them, we say they are so evil they deserve to suffer punish, the rest punish, of eternity, punish. you know, in hellfires and stuff. That's how much, and we hate people because of that, all right? To the extent that nobody believes that anybody has free will, we don't have, we don't hate each other for anything because it would be logically irrational. It would just like, it would make no sense to hate somebody or to blame someone for something that they have had absolutely no choice but to do, okay? So it would, cre it would create, in essence, a much more compassionate and intelligent world. All right, and we've, we've done shows about this, but we should get into the topic. And the belief now. in free will has gone unchallenged now for a long time. People just assume it's true for some reason. Yes. I mean, we we got to teach kids in school that I don't know what age is appropriate, but your will is not free. No. So if you make a mistake, don't feel, you know, you try to correct it, but don't punish yourself or feel terrible about it. I mean, but it is what it is. What, what my special guest Nick <laughs> is saying is that, yes, it creates guilt. You know, it, it also like we, we sometimes we hate ourselves. Oh, no, I did something horrible. I hate myself. I'm so evil. I deserve to suffer. To the extent that we understand nobody has a free will, we're much more compassionate and kind to ourselves also. Not All to right. mention the UC Irvine and Yale study that just came out I saying. Won't. Oh, you don't want to mention <laughs> no, that study? No, no. Well, we got to get it. Higher the, homicide rates in countries that believe in free will. We're, right. we're, we're, we're Correlated. Right. We got, All right, so the topic, the main topic is like free will causality in human beings. All right, beings. go ahead. So the, the premise behind this, the, the foundation is some people, again, like as I said in the beginning, believe or think that causality, this, this natural physical law of nature, cause and effect, doesn't apply to human beings or to our choices. Okay, how do we refute this? Nick, why don't you start us out? How what? How do <laughs> if we I had a free will, I would have been listening. How do we, we refute the notion that some people have that, yes, they say, yes, I accept that causality, cause and effect, mm -hmm. is a fundamental law of nature. They accept law that. Of nature. They accept that. But they say, but we human beings are special. We're special. We can transcend that law. Okay. We can make a decision that's completely, it completely evades, you know, that, that causality. I would say that would have to do with the hedonic imperative. The person you're asking is so emotionally attached to the idea of free will that they want that they believe in free will just because they want it to be true. And we all know just because you want something to be true doesn't make it true. I mean, just because I wanted Santa Claus to be true doesn't make it true. So what you're talking about is a person who is so emotionally attached to the idea of free will and vice versa. He's so psychologically unhinged by the idea without free will that this person is going to circumvent any kind of logic or reason and just argue with you that man has free will and can somehow float high above his genetics and conditioning and past experiences to make the decisions independent of all prior causes. I, I mean, it's an emotional thing. It's their meaning. Okay, you've just explained kind of like the underlying emotional motivation for, for, for That's getting, right. getting this wrong. But like, try to explain to the audience what their mistake is. What's the mistake in their reasoning? The mistake is usually, I've discussed this with a lot of people, that they believe human beings are what I would call a self-causer 
or a first causer. So they'll argue with you and say, yes, I do believe in causality. I do believe in cause and effect, but I am the causer. All right. Now, would you like to get into that now? I'd like, I'd like you to explain to our audience. All right, audience so if man were, first of all, we're not a first causer because we all know how we were caused with our parents having sex and we were, did not conceive ourselves. We, did not, we were born into a middle of a story. We didn't choose our genetics. We didn't choose our parents. We didn't choose the city we were born in, the time period, the language, how we were raised, any of that, none of that. So to say you're a first causer, it's clearly not true. Now, if you were a first causer, just say I'm wrong, but just play along with me. Say you were a first causer. Then every time you wanted to have a blissful moment, you could just access it whenever you want. You would be blissed out. You'd be a perfect angel every moment of every day because you would be the first causer. You wouldn't have any personal history. You wouldn't have any preferences. You would be the self-causing God that could just decide, I could just start speaking a different language the next moment. I mean, I don't know Chinese, but if I was a first causer, I could just, you know, I don't, in other words, my personal history and my genes and my past history and my genetics would be 100% erased, and I would just uh, never be depressed and only be good and be a perfect angel, and that's what a first causer means, that you have no prior, I wouldn't know what to do next, because yeah. everything would seem equal. More so, you know, more so. To be a Thank first you. I explained closer. it as well as I that could find it. Thank you very that much. That was very good. Thank you. <laughs> By the way, that's rehearsed. Not re but that I'm to prove there's no free will. I get better at things the more I do it. Absolutely. I didn't just dream that up. Absolutely. I thought not. about it before. And it was. I mean, you can't yeah. take credit for it. You're no, grateful. But it's a slow process. I'm building Absolutely. to try to explain now, it a little here's better. The thing, all right. Yeah. Before we move on, basically, you know, in other words, like to posit that one is a first cause means like let's say you make a decision like between you know you choose cornflakes between uh, over rice krispies that means to be a first cause or it means you made that choice without a reason you know that like there's no reason for it which is like ultimately like like random or like you know so that's another reason why this first cause thing is because like one of one of the uh, no no they argue there is a reason but i made the reason no i know no but, prior reason but that that doesn't make sense in other words so like answer it all right, all right Yen so, would say that he made the reason all right so in other words, there is a – so like, all right, first you have to understand that they accept causality. So they, they accept that, um, that, um, that causality rules, you know, us. But then they say that like, but we as human beings aren't subject to it. So but then – so there, he's saying that we're not subject to it. But at the same time, he's also saying – even though he's saying that he's a first causer, he's also saying that there is a cause for what he's saying. So, you, you know, in other words, he's making two contradictory statements. The causal and chain comes to him. The buck stops here and starts here, and it starts a new causal chain with the human. Right. So, like, all right. So, in terms of, like, his, like, his reason – being, you know, kind of like a first cause. That's right. Like, sometimes you can refer to as a person being a first cause, but in this case, he's referring to a reason being the first, let's say, domino in a chain. That's right. Again, the 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 the, the answer to that that reason, you know, occupies a place in, in in time within the universe. And again, everything must have a cause. We human beings, the, the fundamental answer. We know everything. I'm the a, fundamental we'll answer. Come on. Okay. The fundamental answer is that we human beings. You know, whether even though we can't like see our thoughts and stuff like that, you know, we are physical. We are physical beings. We cannot transcend the physical laws of nature. What this guy was saying at the meetup is he's trying to decide between Rice Krispies and uh, what was the other one, Corn Flakes. He's the cause. So you're saying if he chooses one over the other, he does agree with causality, but he's causing the causality. So stop saying that he doesn't understand causality. He does, but he keeps saying he's part of. The, He's he, creating the causal chain. He can't, if, if he's saying... He is saying that. If he's saying that he understands causality and he's implying or suggesting that he's a first cause, he clearly doesn't understand the implications of causality because causality stipulates that that causal chain goes back, as, as far as we know, at least to the Big Bang. When you say first cause, is that a synonym to self-cause? Sure. Okay. So I sweet. would say to him, assume you say you're right and you are a first cause. Or how would you know? Let's just... See, every time I get in this argument, I like to just say to the guy, say I'm wrong and you're right. You, you win. As crazy as it sounds, you're a first causer, you're a self-causer, you're God, you're starting the causal chain. How will you know which cereal to pick? How would he answer that? Exactly. That's, yes, that's a very good point. In other words— so like, how does he know? Exactly. Because so, he decided? So, that's, so that kind of like says that what he's asserting— is self-contradictory. It contradicts itself. He's saying he's the first causer, right. but then he's saying he, he chose the, the corn flakes because of some reason. Because he likes it. That reason is a cause. So, so like, he's saying he, it's not for a cause, but obviously there was a cause. All mm. right. 
Um, now, and also some people say, well, human beings, they write symphony operas. They infer meaning and ideas. So if you have meanings and ideas, that's all caused by your personal history. Can I just give a quick example of meaning? So, for example, say today we saw a plane in the sky in Manhattan on a beautiful clear day flying near some buildings. You and I might say, oh, sh you know, get nervous that it's 9-11 and, you know, get very nervous. A 10-year-old kid who has never, never experienced that might say, D you know, Dad, look how beautiful it is and not even have that association. So it's clearly the meaning of a plane flying in the sky near a building is triggering to me because especially with the f missing flight, now, you know, I don't want to date, but I'm saying meaning and ideas are still based on a personal history, internal cause of what happened to you in your life. Absolutely. Any, any reason we make, I mean, sometimes we'll make a decision and we won't know of the reason. Somebody will like, you know, pick one or the other. I don't know. I'll pick this one. Even that has some kind of rationale that may be unconscious to us, but there has to be a reason why you chose one over the other. You know, that's, that's fundamental. All right. Um, so I think we've covered this. This is good. So in other words, causality, this fundamental law of nature, governs not just the universe, every physical thing, planets, stars, you know, everything. everything. It, you know, it's like life is a movie. Reality is a movie. Not, it doesn't just govern all physical stuff. It governs we human beings who are also physical. It governs our thoughts. It, it govern, governs our decisions. Anything we think, feel, say, do, everything. So all right. So like, what do you think? I think we've covered that. Would you agree with my premise that everything is actually internally caused? Um, I, I know an external thing might hit you as stimuli, but still, you George Ortega has to process it. It hits all kinds of things inside you, like your brain chemistry and how it gives you – and you can't control your feelings, but it comes from the outside, and then it's internally caused on your personal history, well, I mean, even if it's an external cause. If you're, to, if you're to say that like all of our causes of our behavior are internal – I think that's like you have to use that from a certain perspective because in other words if you're talking from the universal perspective then really the cause the the fundamental and comprehensive all inclusive cause for everything you know not just what we humans do but for everything that happens is the state of the universe evolution the the universe of the universe the the evolution of the universe moment by moment step by step causally that's what's really causing everything so in other words like so it's really coming from, you know, the first cause was the Big Bang. Yeah, but our behavior is based on how certain, th how everything makes us feel internally. I understand. So in other words, so that's what makes it physical. Right. You so have to internalize it. Right. And then you have brain state, chemistry, quarks, chemicals, atoms. You know, whatever. Everything, how it makes you feel. You can't control your feelings. Feelings just happen. Right. And again, the, w w the reason you can't control them is because like. You know, they have, well, that's, that's no, what, another way of explaining it, but like, yeah, these feelings are also part of the causal chain. Right. That's also part of the state-by-state -state evolution of the universe. All right. Right. I think we've covered this. We've got about four minutes left. Um, let's, let's do some, like, pitching. All right. Here's the thing. You know, it's been four years now since, since I started the meetup in Manhattan that you joined. Ah. And, um, and then we, we started, I started doing this show. Then, then Nick started doing his show that I joined him in. Fall of 2011 we started. Right. That, that's your show in, in right. Manhattan that, you know, we co-host. And, like, so basically we've been doing this for about four years. And, all right, people have gotten this. Sam Harris, a three times New York Times bestselling author who's a neuroscientist, has written a book about this. It's been in the New York Times and Time Magazine, USA Today, uh, scientific American, new scientist. It's been, you know, the idea that we don't have a free will has been presented, but it hasn't hit the big time. It hasn't reached mass audiences. So, like, for the next three minutes, I want to talk about, like, what needs to happen for this to happen. And, like, what I believe, and so if you're a producer, if you know a producer, if you're in Hollywood, if you know people in Hollywood or here in New York that, um, that make movies, documentaries, what's needed now is a theatrical re release, major motion picture, documentary that explains to the world not only that, that really blows people's minds, that really like just amazes people by the fact that absolutely nothing is under their control, even though it seems it, and then explains to them what are the benefits to our world and to their personal lives for the world to understand this. What would you name this movie? Oh, I would, well, the, considering here in the United States, considering that like, you know, over... 80, 90 percent of us are spiritual or like over 80 percent of us believe in God, I would call it something like God's will. 
You know, because like, in other words, like there are a lot of religious people who don't believe in free will because they think the Bible tells them that they have a free will. The Bible really doesn't. But like, in other words, if we'll you lose, tell we'll lose the atheist audience. Well, that's all right. They're, they're, you know, they, they, don't, they already know this. What about no free will, colon, the new human consciousness? No uh, free will, the new human consciousness. That's good, absolutely. That's good. But the idea is like with the religious people is like if you, if you get the point across to them that, no, we're not manifesting our will. We're manifesting God's will. Yeah, that's good. And to me, like I'm a pantheist, so like God and the universe are synonymous. All right. Um, what's another way? How about a, t a TV show? Okay, so this has been debated for millennia behind, you know, academic doors. You and I are trying to popularize for the people. We're not professional philosophers, thank God, because they, you know, they get oh, into all they kinds of incompatible. They get into this. all kinds of words that nobody. So we want to, first of all, whoever's watching this on MNN, we I, we want to be on CNN, just the M to C, CNN versus MNN. We want this to be on a regular channel. You know, they talk about the missing plane in Malaysia. Why not have an hour special debate show about do human beings have free will? It would have great ratings, which is money. You know, everybody wants ratings. Could go on, what, weekly? Oh, yeah. We have the pastor, the rabbi, the Muslim clerk, Sam Harris, me, George. And we could even take calls. And have it out and get to the bottom of this. That would be such a great idea because, like, if you believe in free will, then you could have your representative come yeah, and Yeah, debate join us. The Let's debate. go. And, like, you know, again, so one, pe once people begin to, to understand, whoa, absolutely no nothing is up to us and are completely amazed, they'll tune in week after week after week to, like, to learn more about it and understand the truth of this. All right, so like you know, two great ideas of like what needs to happen next. We could try to do a radio show. We we'll gotta look into that. Radio show would be good. All right, so like we got about twenty-four yeah. seconds. So thanks for watching. We're gonna again. This is episode one hundred and fifty-five. We're gonna keep doing episodes. We're gonna keep like you know doing our Manhattan show. We do that like you know it, it airs weekly, and like you know Darwin when Darwin. And we're live about once every five weeks now. Yeah, well every. Yeah, absolutely. Or once a month. So, but we'll, we'll keep doing this, and so come back, and we'll, you know, we'll keep explaining this so you get this. Thanks.